what i'm going to do is to uh, share the vision for artificial intelligence the implementation of uh, artificial intelligence that uh, is being thought about in the uh, in, in the indian government uh, of course uh, the the pandemic has uh, in 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 many ways accelerated uh, the pace of of these by really showing up the importance of the digital economy and possibilities that uh, none of us thought really existed before the pandemic now have have become uh, you know have have been shown to be really uh, you know um, to manifest and and that i think it will be one of the key aspects for which positive aspects that uh, this year will be remembered for uh, so I, i'll start with uh, a, a vision that was articulated in the uh, economic survey of july 2019 where we wrote a chapter which was titled uh, data by the people of the people for the people um, and and it was um, it, the idea there was thinking about data as a public good um, where the data that is brought together and data sets there are you know a lot of them you know administrative data sets third party data sets um survey data sets all of which can be brought together um and and thereby uh, by providing a 360 degree uh, view on data while at the same time of course uh, respecting all the uh, you know all the uh, necessary Uh, uh, requirements for confidentiality, which already has been created, you know, now uh, in India. Uh, I think the value added that can be provided for processing, for um, you know, analytics is just enormous. Um, uh, Jay Shrinjan was uh, mentioning about the uh, about the the initiative on health tech. Um, I think that is a very very important initiative. Um, especially this is something that was uh, you know described in the in that particular chapter as well thinking about um, having the the records about of all the the health records of each individual and and the idea there is to vision an india where um, you know anybody could be uh, going to a hospital anywhere in the country and uh, his or her records could be pulled out just from the database um and now not just not not is it uh, not, you know th that of course enables access you know ease of access but what is far more important is the ability to to do uh, you know to do modeling uh, in terms of bringing understanding um, and you know predictive modeling and then prescriptive uh, you know uh, uh, um, efforts uh, by using by bringing together such kind of data i think uh, the data that is being collected uh, through the atmanirbhar bharat uh, and other um, you know and and several other insurance schemes that are being launched by states as well i think the data that comes together there can be put together with many other third party data sets uh, to create data as a public good the basic idea there was that when we think about you know roads and highways as as public goods and you know um, user charges are levied on using those 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 highways a similar effort can also be thought about where the government puts together these you know uh, disparate data sets adds value in the process and thereby enables the private sector to use these data sets and and you know and and uh, levy the user charge for for that uh, i think which can create the win win you know uh, what what we economists think about as as pareto optimality so uh, within that broad framework um, health tech of course is is one big area recently many of you would have also read about how um, the government is thinking about using drones for 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 identifying you know the uh, um, uh, for for come coming up with you know very careful property records because uh, one of the key uh, ways in which uh, people at the bottom of the pyramid can access credit and get access to the to the to formal financing is through uh, you know is through uh, 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 through land and uh, uh, often times the uh, disputes on land uh, become make it very difficult land you know land titles many times are are not existent and you know the the idea here is to try and really uh, you know use the uh, use use the value of technology 
to to enable you know such such uh, property records to be created which would be a very very seminal step um, in you know in in uh, creating that basic data to enable uh, further processing uh, so these are you know th these are these are but two examples i think the the the, the prospects for agritech for instance especially with the seminal reforms that have been done on the agriculture side be it on the apmc or the essential commodities act and the prospects for you know development of 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 food, the food processing industry is another big area where you know um, where i think ai and and uh, you know and and uh, um, machine learning can can for, it can come together to really uh, enable better crop uh, crop choice um, and uh, at the same time enable diversification one of the key problems that exists in india uh, is the fact that uh, you know crop diversification is not very not very large at the same time even uh, the these the sowing decisions often times are actually not they do not take into account the aggregate market scenarios and that's why one often times gets the uh, you know the uh, these these volatility in prices because of the uh the the free rider problem as as uh, you know we economists think about so uh, apart from health tech you know uh, in the use in on in land tech and agri tech i think about you know the use of ai especially being very very valuable in the financial sector and the reason i think about it is because you know if you look at the opportunity there is in the financial sector uh, i think just it is it is enormous um in india you know in uh, compared to the size of its economy in terms of the financing and the financial sector itself punches way below its its, its current weight um, we are the fifth largest economy in the world and yet uh, in terms of the penetration of credit uh, you know within the country if you look at the private credit to gdp uh, ratio in india it's about 52% the average for oecd economies on the other hand is about 160% uh, which means that even if we were to grow three times in terms of the credit penetration we would be only catching up with the global with the average uh, you know among oecd economies and this is where the application of you know ai machine learning can can you know can really be very very useful uh, an aspect that was covered in great detail in this year's economic survey looking at the, uh, the in the chapter on the golden jubilee of bank nationalization uh, so i want to spend some time you know uh, gi giving uh, specific uh, uh, laying out the specific ideas that can be exploited by uh, by by many companies in this area um, so th th this relates to the to the absence of uh, you know of of uh, data analytics and um, you know and 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 uh, uh, machine learning artificial intelligence etc in the you know in the corporate lending space um, if one looks at the way in which the banking sector you know um, has grown over the last 25 to 30 years in india it has been a phenomenon of accelerator and break um, which is you know when the economy does well you know the finance the banking sector goes headlong ends up giving credit without actually taking into account adequate you know um, uh, uh, measures on the quality and this is where the the importance of uh, you know of, of uh, models uh, you know credit rating models based on ai can be very useful i'll give you a specific example here um, i'm sure all of you you know would have heard about deep blue the uh, software that was developed by ibm uh, now you know i think what many many people often times uh, may maybe do not uh, take into account is that this software was not even taught the rules of chess it was only fed the you know millions of games uh, that software ended up learning you know not only the rules of chess but also the tactics and the strategy for for playing chess and ended up defeating the highest elo rated player ever in you know in in human history gary kasparov um now the reason i actually bring up this example is compared to the tactics and strategy that are involved in in, in a game of chess which is far far more complicated the tactics or strategy that is used let's say in default and especially in willful default for instance is is you know is almost childish the number of ways in which willful default can happen or default can happen are a small fraction of the kind of tactics and strategy the number of permutations and combinations that can result in a game of chess 
and and that is why uh, this is this is an area that has significant scope uh, for instance the the use of, uh, of of transactions relating to the uh, you know related party transactions um, one, and this is something that we showed evidence on uh, in the economic survey that companies that willfully default are far more likely to be employing related party transactions uh, their dis the quality of their disclosure is likely to be very poor um, at the same time the promoters sh uh, shareholding uh, that has been pledged uh, is also going to be is also you know very high now these are these are simple patterns but you know far more complicated patterns can also be unearthed um, by the use of of uh, you know ai and machine learning in the in the banking context because while retail lending typically is you know does not employ that much sophisticated you know credit rating models in the area of, uh, of of you know corporate lending especially large large corporate loans and the the, the possibilities being higher i think the use of ai and machine learning is actually is is quite apt and there are many uh, you know models out there that that are already employing this so the indian uh, banking sector can really benefit from implementing this um, and you know especially in the context of of corporate lending because if we look at the uh, you know the, the indian banks even private sector banks when, when they use these analytical models uh, they have used it primarily in the context of of retail lending uh, it has not been used as much in the context of corporate lending and evidence shows that you know when uh, when when better models are employed uh, the banks that employ such models are able to grow their balance sheet uh, you know in in a very robust manner without suffering quality issues and so this is a, a very very uh, you know very important opportunity uh, even for instance to to grow the uh, lending beyond the usual you know uh, borrowers for instance if one looks at the magnitude of lending to msmes that has remained stagnant over the last 15 years which basically suggests that you know our banks have not developed models to actually go and lend to msmes uh, another opportunity is if you look at the 40 crore which is about 400 million bank accounts that have been created as part of the financial inclusion program the pradhan mantri janan yojana and the transaction history that has now been developed over the last 5 years using that you know for ai models you know all kinds of financial services products not only loans can be really designed and this is really fortune that, that can be created at the bottom of the pyramid can, you know even moral hazard adverse selection problems etc in insurance can, you know in the in the at the bottom of the pyramid can really be enabled by bringing together such models similarly uh, you know the, the bringing together the postal bank for instance you know which is a payment bank and the post office service savings, savings bank which has deposits data the, the post office uh, payments bank has transaction data bringing together both of those and utilizing the fact that a post office is there in every nook and corner of the country um, you know and, and thereby overlaying ai models or you know for for predicting the ability to repay and willingness to repay i think the pro the prospects of financial inclusion are just enormous um, so I, 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 what i would want to summarize and say that you know apart from the the uh, emphasis on health tech agri tech land tech i think fintech especially is a enormous opportunity uh, that 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 india is ready to exploit um, and i think covid has really illustrated those benefits um, so india is uniquely positioned to utilize these given the 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 emphasis on the digital economy uh, that has happened amidst the covid so let me uh, you know uh, congratulate the conference organizers for for a very relevant uh, you know conference and and holding it at this point in time uh, and and i look forward to, uh, to to the various advances in these area and and to stay connected with them